Hi there again everybody, this is Steve Bishop continuing our series on Programming in Access 2013 and we're going to start off by working with databases. So I'm going to flip on over here to Access. Uh, you should already have Access installed 2013. You can also have 2010 or any of the previous versions available. I'd say you really don't want to go through this series unless you have at least Access 2010 or higher because uh, some of the features in 2007 and earlier are just simply not going to be available uh, when I go through them in this course and that may, may become troublesome. Um, we're going to start out with a blank desktop database but before we click on that I just want to mention here a custom web app is also a possibility which is essentially a way of designing a database application that could be interfaced uh, with SharePoint. So you need to have a SharePoint server available in order to design a custom web app and I do not have one available to me um, and frankly, I don't particularly like SharePoint. It's neat for a lot of things, but it's very complex. It's kind of a whole other area of uh, of development that I just personally don't, I would rather not get into. I'd rather deal with directly with either PHP or ASPX or something like that. Um, these other sections, asset tracking, contracts, task management, project management, these are all databases, uh, databases that are already pretty much pre-done by Microsoft, and so they're kind of already available to you and you can modify them, adjust them to match your needs, but since we're actually learning how to make databases, we're going to start with a blank desktop database. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to be presented to give my database a name. And I've decided that we're going to start out with just kind of a, I'm going to make this company called Service Inc. Very simple, very general um, kind of company that I just decided, eh, why not? I already, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to be presented with this as our first screen. Now what you're seeing here is table one is essentially that thing that I briefly discussed in the introduction called a table. And you'll see that there's already a field here called ID with a new one. Essentially what's happening here is you may recognize this. It looks a little similar to Excel in a way. You've got a column here with this cell that has new in it. If I click over here, it says click to add, and I have these different types of data types that I can select from. I can either have text, a number, currency, date, time, yes or no. Um, look up or relationship fields, rich text, long text attachments, hyperlink calculated fields, uh, or I can paste this field to which if I copied something I can paste it in here. If I'm going to add something and, and what I've decided to do with this service Inc is I'm going to go ahead and create some sort of um, application that a company would use in order to kind of track its uh, customers, its sales orders, invoices, sales leads, that sort of thing. I don't really have a specific direction for this database just yet. Uh, it's going to be moving along as we go because I'm just making this up as I go. <laughs> anyway, so the first thing that we probably want to do is keep track of our employees. And this is the important thing you need to understand about when you're developing a database. You have to understand what is the data that we're needing to See that we need to save. What are we organizing? What is it that we're keeping track of? And for us, if we're going to talking about a company, well, a company usually has employees. So not only that, but we may want these employees to be able to access this database. We may want to have certain sections that they can go into and they can type in their own customer leads or they, if they make a sale they can enter in their own sales transactions. So really you have to, it's about organizing and understanding your data first and foremost before you really do anything else with, with access. You need to understand the underlying information you want to track. So for me, the first thing I want to deal with are employees. Okay, and we're going to start out, we're not going to keep too much information, we're not going to get real specific about employees, but we will want to do things like first name. Oops. Okay, and then the next one I want to do is short text for last name. All right, now there is another way in which we can organize, uh, we can access this interface to, to create these different columns. These are what we call columns of data, okay? And each one of these 
uh, down below is called a row. So you have columns going uh, vertically, uh, vertically down. Horizontal is called a row, and each individual ones of these is called a cell. Uh, so this ID field we'll get into in just a little bit, but this actually has something to do with relationships, and we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. But for right now, I want to show you how I normally go in and actually um, deal with setting up my tables. Okay, I'm going to name this Table 1 Employees. And we'll get into why I name it with a Table 1 Employees in just a little bit, but for right now I just, just know that I'm going to name this Table 1 Employees. And you get this interface here, which allows really, you'll notice it's very similar to the first page that you saw where you have here's the ID field as the first one and it's called an auto number data type. The second thing is first name with a short text as its data type. And this can go on and on and on and we will get into that. I, I guess probably another thing you could do and I, I don't recommend doing this for your employees but we could do an age, right? Which an age would be a number. So you can see how easily I can design, I can set up what kinds of fields of information do I need. I give them a name and I give it a data type, right? Uh, I'm also going to give it a password because I want my employees to have to have some sort of password in order to access the system. Uh, we could also keep track of things like their wage, uh, let's do, I'm going to do it hourly, uh, just by everybody's going to be hourly. Notice we have a very special type of data type called currency that I can select here. All right, so I've got first name, last name, age, password, wage, right? And I have te short text, short text, number, short text, and currency. My ID field, this is a very important field, and you're probably wondering, well, what is this ID field? Well, let's say I have two employees both with the same first and last name. Maybe I have a father and a son. Uh, one is named, I don't know, Joe Smith and another named Joe Smith. Well, then that person, these, this name is not going to be unique at all. Uh, you know, some way, somehow, I need to uniquely identify each employee in my company and so you're usually given some sort of like an employee ID. Now I could easily change this to say employee ID but I prefer not to and there's actually a reason for this. There's a convention uh, in database development where you actually leave your ID field to be just ID. Uh, and it becomes important later on when, when we get into something called relationships and how you map different tables to each other. But for right now, we're just going to leave it this way. First name, last name, age, password, and wage. You'll notice that I don't have any space between first name and last name. There's no space in here. And that's very important when you're programming. You don't want any spaces. It becomes very difficult in order. Sometimes you can make syntactical errors later on when you try to do code. Because what will happen is when you type in a code and you, uh, when you're typing code out and there's supposed to be a space in here, uh, the code will actually read that space as the next statement uh, in your code. And you don't really want that. You want it to understand that this is all one field and not two separate fields. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later and you'll see how that'll work when we get into the VBA. So for right now, we've set up our first employee table. Uh, you can see if I go over here to the datasheet view, we'll see that the view is essentially, we'll go, we're basically going back to, oh, it says I want it. It doesn't need, I need to save the table here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see first name, last name, age, password, wage, etc. And you'll notice that I've already got numbers already being put in here and we'll go into that in the next episode.